In the last part of this AWS Lambda with serverless and Java guide, I want to have a look at a um, way to get full control about the serialization and deserialization of the incoming payload. So right now for all the Lambdas we wrote, we used the request handler interface where we specify the input and output type using um, Java classes. And in the background, AWS took care to serialize it for us. But there's another possible interface to implement, which is called the request stream handler. And with this request stream handler, we get a really low level access to the invocation of our Lambda as we get past the raw input stream and can write to the output stream directly. So let's add an example on how to use this handler. For this, add a new function to our serverless YAML. Let's say full control lambda. Again, the handler is needed. It's, I won't add any events here, so we will directly invoke this lambda using serverless, but this works with any other events we, we used throughout the guide. Apart from this, I've added the Jackson dependency to the project so we get access to the object mapper and can use it to map payload uh, to Java classes for ourselves. So that's in the project now. And then let's start writing the lambda. And now we will implement here the request stream handler. So this doesn't expect any input and output type as it will always be an input stream and an output stream. And what we can now do here, first let's instantiate the object mapper. Next, let's try to parse the incoming input stream. So therefore we can use the object mapper and say read value. And read value is overloaded and there's one usage where you can pass a, an input stream to it. Next, the object mapper expects the class we want to parse the incoming JSON to. So here we specify person. So person is a simple POJO containing two attributes. One is name and one is ID and getters and setters in a two string method. So once we parse it, let's simply print out what we got. That's it. And then also let's modify it. So let's say we want to override the ID to see that we actually do something. Let's use a random ID here. And finally, we have to write back to the output stream. So we can say um, object mapper, write value and pass in the output stream. And next comes our object, which is the person we now serialized. Let's save this and build the project. And now deploy everything. So we should now see that our Java file also increased. So we're now above two megabytes because we included Jackson here. And now as this is deployed, let's use SLS and invoke it. So hyphen F specify the name of the Lambda, hyphen L for logs and hyphen D for data. So we can pass here a payload. So let's pass a person object, which just has a name, no ID specified yet. And as a result, we should get a, a valid JSON here, which contained the name we specified and also ID is populated here. So you can see here our print statement included the two string where the ID wasn't present yet and it was null. So this is fine. We can also add another example. Let's add an ID 42. But this should be overwritten once it returns. So we can see here it was there, but we overwrote it. And the whole reading and writing to the stream um, is working as expected. 